You're gonna learn everything you need to know about cooking these steaks. But if you don't, don't worry, I won't pick on you. Hey everybody, welcome back to another week of The Fogo Life. I'm your host, Captain Ron. This week, something really cool. We're gonna cook my favorite kind of steak. You ever been to a Brazilian steakhouse? They cut that picanha off that big skewer. We're gonna cook it. But you don't need a rotisserie to do it. No, we're gonna take picanha. I'm gonna show you one way, two ways, three different ways of cooking picanha so that you're gonna have the best steak you'll ever have at your own house. Now, a picanha has a couple different names. It has picanha, culotte, top sirloin, and it all has this fat cap on it. No matter what you call it, it's a great steak to cook. The problem is, is that it kind of gets chewy and people complain, oh, my steak was tough. It happens because you overcook it. If you like your steak well done, this is not the steak for you. Nope, picanha is meant to be served medium rare, at most medium. That's how you want to eat it. That's why picanha should never be overcooked. You'll want to cook it to an absolute maximum of 135 degrees internal. Well, that's enough talking about picanha. Let's talk about what we're going to do today. The first way I'm going to show you is on a rotisserie, just like they do in the Brazilian steakhouses. We're going to put it on the skewer against the grain, and we're going to shave it off at the end so that it's against the grain. We're going to have a nice, tender, moist bite. Ooh. The second way we're going to do it is we're going to cook it on steak on a skewer, okay? We're going to do it a little bit differently, but we're going to cook it direct. We want it to get a nice char, so we're going to cook it direct flames and flip it often. Our third method is that we're going to take it, we're going to cook it reverse sear. You've heard of reverse sear? We're going to do that with picanha and finish it off on cast iron for the ultimate sear. Now, let's get down to our prep work. The first thing I want to talk about is these picanhas, okay? Because what they have here is I have prime. Oh, I can't afford prime. Let me tell you something. At my store, it was a dollar more per pound for prime. And these are only two to two and a half pound steaks. So you're not looking at a giant difference, but you are looking at a giant taste and texture difference when you buy prime. Now it's time to open these babies up and see what we've got. Now let's talk about picking out your perfect picanha. When I pick them out, I wanna look for one that is kind of nice and tightly sealed. Not a lot of juices showing in the bag. If the juices are in the bag, guess where they're not? That's right, inside the steak. I like to have my juices inside the steak. So when I'm looking for one, I'm looking for one about two and a half pounds or so. Nice marbling and juices not overflowing in the bag. Okay, so like I said, the first one we're gonna prepare is for the rotisserie. So we wanna make sure we got the greens. The greens are running this way in here. So we're gonna cut it against the green. When you're going on the rotisserie, three finger rule. You want it to go three fingers thick. So I'm gonna measure out three fingers and cut it into a steak. So we need to season them up, but before we do that, it only makes sense we're gonna put them on the skewer rod first. Otherwise, we put all the seasoning on, put it on here, we wipe everything off. So we're gonna put them in a horseshoe shape like this, like this, and put them onto the skewer, then season them. If you want to, too, you can give yourself a little head start, because the fat can be pretty tough to get through. So give yourself a little start, cut a little X in there. This travel knife works beautifully for that. Stick it through. Voila. All right, now we got all three pieces on here. Notice I keep the fat, I keep everything shaping the same way. We want it to cook nice and evenly. So we're gonna put our other skewer on, and once we get down to put it on the, the rotisserie, we're gonna try and center it. We want it centered on our grill as best as possible. But look at that, pretty cool, right? All right, now we're gonna season it up. So we're gonna take our coarse sea salt, coarse, coarse sea salt, and we're gonna apply it real heavily. When you think you've applied enough, apply a little more. And lastly, we can't forget the important part, salting the fat. <laughs> Sounds funny, but it's all gonna work out well. There's one other thing we need to do, and this is before you start the fire, okay? Is to take your skewer, sorry, I didn't mean to turn my back to you, insert it into the rotisserie, and you wanna make sure that it's in the center of the grill. So we can adjust it back and forth so that this is cooking right in the center of the fire. You don't wanna have it all the way to one side or the other. You wanna right in the center, this way it gets nice, even heat. For today's cook, we're gonna be using our black bag grilling charcoal, okay? It's kind of medium to large size chunk. It's perfect for grilling. So let me load up the kick-ass basket and get her started. Now, if you notice the way that I put the charcoal in there, I kind of poured it towards the back. We're gonna bank all the coals to the back. This way we don't have it, this, this meat is really fatty, so it's gonna drip a lot. We don't want giant flare-ups giving us a bitter taste on the meat, no. So we're gonna put as much of the coal as to the back of the grill as we possibly can. We're gonna use some fire starters to get it started, but let's get doing that. All right, our fire's going, so we're gonna just slide it in. <laughs> all right, now that we got the rotisserie one on, let's talk about steak number two we're gonna cook, all right? We're gonna cook this one on skewers as well, but I'm gonna show you a different way of doing it and cooking it direct. It's pretty cool. So let's get this one open and get started. 
Now the last one, since we're gonna shave it down the sides like that, I showed you how to cut it across the grain. This one, I'm actually gonna cut with the grain and we're gonna still get a skewer it. The reason being is when we're done cooking it, I'm gonna take it off of the skewers and serve it just like a regular steak. So let me show you how to do this one now. Now, same thing, we're gonna skewer it and then salt it. So I got my handy dandy skewers. I'm gonna turn it into a horseshoe, same exact way, and just give it a shot right through the middle. Now that we've got them both skewered, let's season them up. Now we got the rotisserie going on the XL. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna light up the Mini Max over here, cook these direct on the Mini Max over direct flame. So let's get, let's get our lid up. Now I've got this one filled up with our premium, but notice it's charcoal that I've used before. Nothing wrong with using that. You can reuse your charcoal. And now that that one's ready, let's cut the third one. All right, lastly, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this one into steaks as well, but we're going to reverse sear them. It's gonna go back to three fingers wide for this one. This is what I like to show because sometimes people realize afterwards that they cut their picanha the wrong way to put on the skewers. They wanna shave it like this. This is a great way to save the day and make yourself a backyard hero. So we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna make them three fingers wide. And the nice part about these is all we have to do is salt them. So, coarse salt in hand and start sprinkling. Good news, our spinning picanha is done. Look at that, is that just awesome looking? Now we're gonna set this on the side. What do we do with any steak? We rest it. So there it shall sit to rest. Now let's reconfigure this for some two zone cooking on the XL. What? Like I said, the next ones, we're gonna do a two zone reverse sear. So I'm just gonna simply turn my basket a little bit like that, okay? You don't actually have to do this. You can just put everything else in sideways, but for filming purposes, it's easier for us to do it like this. No, I'm not driving, Miss Daisy. We're gonna put our expander in here. So put that in, okay? We wanna set up one side indirect. So we got this handy dandy half moon here. We're gonna put it on that side, actually. Okay, good, good. Now we're gonna put our grate in one side, put our other grate in the other side. Okay, and we're gonna lay this beautiful cast iron half moon over the direct side so that this is heating up while the steaks are cooking. The beautiful part is since our grill is already to temperature, we can just go ahead and put the steaks right on the grill. Notice that I'm putting the fatter end towards the center because there is heat on this side. So I'm putting the, the fatter ends of the steaks towards the center. Our last set of steaks are our direct steaks, okay? So while that one's reverse searing, we're gonna throw these on the Mini Max and cook these right to direct over the coals. Now, because these are such a fatty steak and because they are so close to the fire, we have to keep a good eye on them to not let them burn. So we're gonna continue to flip them about every 45 seconds or so. Rotisserie picanha, check. Direct skewered picanha, check. Now, these are at 120 degrees. So we're gonna pull these off of here, okay? And we're gonna leave it open and get this charcoal cranked up and get this cast iron screaming hot so that we can sear these things off. Just a quick minute on each side sear and they should be good to go. So we're gonna leave this open, open up the vents all the way, heat her up and sear them off. Last part, now that they're all seared, we wanna sear that fat. You don't want that fat on there without being seared. Trust me when I tell you. So do that and you kind of keep rolling it like this a little bit. Make sure the whole thing gets seared. All right, they are all done. I'm so excited. This is my favorite part, cutting and tasting time. So let's see what we've got here. First, the skewered picanha. Let's see what we got. I'm gonna lower this down a little bit because this is just crazy here. Now remember, this is the outside edge, so it's not gonna be the most rare yet. We haven't gotten to the center yet. All right, now the next one is our direct flame cooked on the Mini Max. So we're just gonna take them off of the skewers this time, because remember, we cut them with the grain, so now we have to cut them like we would cut a normal steak. So, let's see what we've got here. Oh yeah, just what we like. All right, and lastly is our reverse seared steak. Let's see what we've got here. The other two have been pretty good. Whoa, look at that. Coast to coast pink, baby. Folks, there you have it. Picanha, three different ways, whoa! Hey, before we go any further, if you like this idea of this, you like what you see in here, give us a thumbs up. Hit subscribe on the channel down below. We'd love to have you join the Fogo family, okay? I'd also love if you leave me a comment. Tell me what you think. How do you like to cook your picanha? 
So anyway, so we've got rotisserie, okay? We've got direct cooked over flame, and we've got the reverse sear. So I gotta tell you, so I'm gonna number them in order, except that I can't tell you which one I like better. The rotisserie and the reverse sear are both outstanding. The nice part about the rotisserie one is you got that nice layer of salt on the outside and you get like a bite of thin steak, so that salt just really makes it pop. Reverse sear is absolutely fantastic. I could put a little extra salt on that and make it really pop as well. It's an awesome steak. The direct flame one, I probably should have raised the grate up a little bit. You get a little bit of that kind of, um, not, I don't, what's the word I'm looking for? It's, it's like a, not a charcoal-y taste, but a carbony kind of taste because it was so close to the flames. So if you can raise it up off the flames a little bit more than what we did, that would be a way to cook it too. They're all three, let me tell you, I wouldn't return any of them if I was in a restaurant and order these, no sir. I mean, look at that. That is just gorgeous, pink from coast to coast, all of them. I was afraid we kind of overcooked them, you know, but no, they're all just pink from coast to coast. Mmm, that is so darn good. <laughs> There's no mistake about it. That's our picanha three ways, folks. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you cut your picanha the wrong way from skewering it, don't worry, cook it like a steak. What's the difference? But that's our video. I want to thank you so much for all the support all the time. I want you to remember to get out and grill, and I'll see you the next time on The Fogo Life.